This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello and welcome to Special Report. November is Adoption Awareness Month, a reminder that there are many ways to build a family. This week we'll be speaking to families who have grown through adoption and they'll be sharing with us the doubts and fears that they have faced, the decisions that they have made and above all the joy that they have encountered after choosing to celebrate life this way. morning in Bensontown, Bangalore. What is happening here today is a seminar for prospective adoptive parents. Representatives from adoption agencies and parents who have built their families through adoption will be giving some guidelines and sharing their experiences with people who are considering going through adoption, not just the procedures but the emotions involved as well. There's a baby waiting for each and every one of us and there's one of us or two of us waiting for a baby somewhere. Will we just have to make that connection. A child is never the object of someone's charity. If you adopt a child, if I've adopted a child, if they've adopted a child, you know why you adopt a child? For yourself. I want to be a mother, I want to be a father, and if I want to do that, there has to be a baby around. You see, we want to... At the care. seminar, we met Nayantara Next and Ramakrishna Malia, and their three-year-old daughter, Malaika. The Malias have been married for eight years. She is a part-time lecturer and he is a software engineer. They want another child and have been thinking of adoption for quite a while now. We feel good meeting other people who have done the same thing that we aim to do and also people who are in the same stage that we are, you know, hoping for the baby. Yeah, we've had the wonderful experience of, you know, giving birth to a child. Now we'd like to experience parenting in a different way. I mean bringing home a baby, it seems very wonderful to us. For us, parenting is not so much about passing on our genes or, you know, our blood should run or the family line should continue. Uh, it's more about passing on our beliefs and attitudes and, you know, whatever we've experienced, good and bad experiences, what have we learned from it, we pass it on to our kids. So if our kids are good human beings, then we think we're successful parents. According to the Hindu adoption law, they will have to adopt a child of the opposite sex to the one they already have. Uh, she thinks uh, like, uh, like mummy has got a daughter, now daddy is going to get a son. <laughs> <laughs> so she thinks like maybe I could be pregnant or so. <laughs> Tiger, this is? Who's that? Yes, she's friend. Tiger's friend? Okay, and this is? Baby. Okay, which baby is this? Who is this baby? My baby. Okay. It was a culmination of a dream I had because when we got married, we had wanted four children and we could only have one. You never considered adoption finally? I did, but uh, our family was not ready for it. And we were of a generation where we listened to our you know, parents and elders. Though my grandfather is adopted. This was actually Malaika Scott. She's been using it from the time she was a little baby. But once she learned that there was a little brother coming home, she moved out of the cot to keep it ready for him. She's as excited and impatient as the rest of the family about the new arrival. Hello, my name Once is the home Thomas. study by the adoption agency is over, it will probably take between six and nine months for the new baby to come home. We now visit a family further on down the adoption process. Chitra and Mohan Kumar, who brought home their daughter Manasi, a few months ago. My parents were very open to it uh, and uh, there, was, uh, there was never this strong kind of resistance from anybody and uh, now that they have seen her that's it like you know every day her grandparents has to hear her voice so 7.30 there's an STD call from both the sides. <laughs> She's irresistible. <laughs> yes. and from my parents there was a little bit of uh, a, a skeptical thought like you know uh, what to, to be like getting a third person from into the family like and you know, there are a lot of uh, indifferences within the families but uh, when we took her for the body this yeah the thought process totally changed. 
When did you first set eyes on little Manasi and what was your reaction? Um, I think we can never forget that experience. It was pouring down like you know it is the peak monsoons in Kerala. They made us sit in this another room with a huge conference table and all that. So that waiting was like you know I literally had butterflies in my tummy. And uh, plus this rain and all this and then uh, after about 20 minutes of waiting I could see this nun you know bringing her in the, under this huge umbrella and uh, the first thing we noticed was this her two twinkling eyes you know right from the door I could see and then she came in with a very broad smile. <laughs> So then they uh, like let us hold her for about 10-15 uh, minutes we were with her like they wanted us to you know get comfortable. So then we, the uh, decision was like instant like we said yeah. Love at first sight. Yes. To come to the decision. But Chitra and Mohan brought little Manasi back home a few months ago and like all babies she's turned their life upside down. And I know it's a cliche but you really understand what is meant by a bundle of joy. <laughs> we meet Manasi and her parents, strengthening that new but already unbreakable bond. And head across to meet the Agarwal. They are adoption veterans. The son of the house, Abhay, was adopted 20 years ago. His parents told him of his adoption as soon as they felt he was old enough to understand. I still remember those uh, kind of... Uh... I used to wear those short pants to schools, you know, <laughs> they thought, yes, I can like, accept it, you know. So, uh, the way they told me was uh, kind of, okay, fine, so what, big deal, you know. <laughs> it's, 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 a very, it's a very casual thing, if you ask me, it's a very casual thing. Yes, I have adopted, yes. I'm one of those fortunate childs who got a fortunate parents. Yes, they... Do you they, tell they, your friends or is it just, does it come up in the conversation uh, at all? Yes, some, yeah. of, some, some of time, yes, it comes up in the conversation. Where it, uh, they ask me, you know, uh, have you ever seen your parents? Hmm. Like, yeah, ask me some other question, I see them every day. <laughs> no, I'm asking you, have you seen the parents who have actually given okay. you birth? Uh, like, uh, you want one answer, you want a sentence. Mm -hmm. So, like, I need one answer, like, no, I've not seen them. Okay. Whenever people have questioned yeah. me, I definitely tell them, yes, I just want to see them once. Yeah. Is it that sense of curiosity? Yes, I just want to see them once, I just want to ask them, what's the reason? Uh, because, you see, uh, I, I, I don't want to project it towards myself, you know, why did you leave me? No. It's not, the, uh, it's not a question of leaving me or nothing, no. I just want to ask them, what is the reason why you've done this? You know, so that it basically helps other people not do the same thing. You've spoken a lot about your personality. Obviously, you do a lot of introspection. Do you feel that you are different in any way because of the fact you're adopted? Yes. How would you say so? I feel like I'm definitely different because uh, a fact of being adopted makes you feel much more mature compared to anybody else okay. you know because there, there's always one thing which I always tell you know a person who can accept the hardest fact of life that he doesn't have his parents of he or she doesn't have parents of their own hmm. you know imagine how strong the person could be there's only one thing uh, that I would like to put across to all my friends, all my brothers, the other sisters. That there's nothing to feel wrong about your adopted. No. Trust me, there are so many children out there. We are the selected people to adopt it. We have that experience of how you feel being adopted. Well, it's a, it's, it's a lifetime treasure. I, I would definitely it's a lifetime treasure. And, uh, you know, it does not really feel negative, there's nothing at all to feel negative about it, no. You should start for yes, I'm adopted. <laughs> you still my darling, baby. <laughs> I love him, we both love each other. <laughs> we can't do without each other. One day if he's late also, I am awake till 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock when he comes back home. <laughs> no, he's very understanding now. I'm happy that he's grown up into a good, like, he's a good boy, very good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> After a long time, it's a change. Listen, I'll be good. Camera always and his mother with her ongoing dispute about how clean he keeps or doesn't keep his room. It's a regular mother and son spat. They're also celebrating 20 years of being together. <laughs> Party. 
being hosted for a few of the hundreds of children waiting in agencies for adoption. Joining them are children who have already been found by their adoptive parents. There is a magic show, music and dancing, and food, and a lot of exuberant children. She's the hedge, uh, one and a half years, and she, he's so humble. He's nearly four now. And we thought we will go for an adoption right in the beginning of our marriage, and we discussed it in the first week, and then we took our own time deciding upon, you know, how to go about it, when to go about it. You want to say something, don't you? <laughs> so I did think a lot over it, uh, uh, various aspects of it. It's a very profound and very emotional kind of a decision that it was. But it, uh, I'm really glad I did it. Every child is just the same. It doesn't matter whether it comes from within your body or from uh, outside. It's, it's a matter of heart. They come from within this heart. At the party is 14-year-old Fatima. And this is a very big day in her young life. By the time she leaves the party and gets back to the adoption agency where she is living, her new mother, Caroline Stampley from Washington State in America, will be waiting to take her home. Where are you going? America. All the way to America. Have you seen pictures of America? Yes, auntie. Are you excited about it? Yes, auntie. And it took us quite some time to find a family as it's more difficult to find families for older children. A child as old as 13 is much more difficult. A child comes with a script already written. Its uh, family has to deal with all the issues and problems and traumas in that child's life. This is where Fatima has been living for the last two years, ever since she first came to Bangalore from Hubli. She's watched her friends here find families of their own and leave. But today is a huge day in her life. Uncle Dave, I don't know the Uncle Dave's kitchen. Do you want to see your shoes? Your shoes match the dress. Wow! Fantastic butterflies on the shoe and on the dress as well. That's nice. Okay. The young girl is proud and excited, keen to show Caroline around, and thrilled by her new clothes and camera. And what's mommy like? Mommy like. Very pretty. Look like very pretty. Your daughter thinks you're very pretty. <laughs> Maybe she needs an eye exam. <laughs> Caroline has arrived just a few hours earlier after a long journey from Washington State and she is clearly still a little overwhelmed. She has been divorced for 20 years and will be a single mother to Fatima. She has two grown children and two grandchildren and she works as a physician's assistant. Caroline was adopted herself. I was adopted as an infant, as a newborn, and um, I don't know who my biological parents are, mm -hmm. um, but adoption is something I had always sort of thought about doing. And yes. Finally decided to go ahead before I got too old. <laughs> um, I wanted an older child uh, because I'm an older parent <laughs> and um, because I work I also wanted a child who was old enough that they would be in school all day because um, I don't want to have a child in a daycare center and also most people don't want older children. They still need homes so there you have it. <laughs> this is a tough one. What's going on in your mind and your heart right now? What are your feelings? That is a tough one. <laughs> Mostly I'm still jet lagged, so I'm tired. I'm happy to be here and happy to finally meet Fatima and anxious to get back home and get our lives started. When you say goodbye to her, when she finds a home, you say, well, what goes on in your mind? Initially, it's a little sad since we have seen her this. She used to come running, calling our names and all. It's sad, but it's finally it's good that she's reaching a nice home day. It's very her emotional. Uh, she's a very nice girl to move with. Very, very, very loving child. Very, very loving child. Very emotional. I love her. The past few days, she was very eager to go meet her mom. She keeps saying, Mommy's coming today, Mommy's coming tomorrow. She's waiting for the dates. Yes. And finally, she's reached and she's very, 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 very excited, I think. No, Fatima? And is it sad to say goodbye or happy that she's found the family? Happy, happy, happy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's a sense of some anxiety is that uh, what you're doing, is it the right thing for the child? Are we dislocating her from our own culture and background and language? But then I also feel there's no culture in poverty and in lack of education and being incarcerated long term in institutional care. So this for a child like Fatima is certainly the best option. Do you ever get children coming back here? Uh, they start corresponding because they want to know a little bit about their background, their past, their roots. There's always that little bit of the jigsaw puzzle which is missing. Sometimes it's very intense. Sometimes it's just enough to come back to the institution, meet people who knew you when you were a small child. Uh, that suffices for some children. For the others, the intensity is very great to want to know what did my mother look like, why was I given up, why was I abandoned. There is a sense of loss and deprivation for adopted children. Sometimes anger, why was I given up, why was I abandoned. So they need to come to terms with all that. I think it's important. <laughs> Adoption does have its share of challenges, which cannot and should not be ignored. For both the child and the adoptive parents, there are issues that will always remain. Curiosity about the biological parents, the need, dealt with in different ways, for the children to know their roots. Sudatta is a support group for adoptive families, which allows the discussion of these doubts. Saraswati and her husband Srinath are both doctors who are among the founders of this group begun shortly after they adopted their own daughter, Vishaka. It's uh, easy to say that parenting is parenting, whether biological or adoptive. But definitely in adoptive parenthood, there are this little extra challenges. For example, the child needs to be told. And there is always the feeling that our children do have two sets of parents. It's very important for the child to know that she, uh, she was adopted and she should hear it for the first time from the parents themselves. We started telling her very early. In fact, uh, the, although the child does not understand, the earlier we start telling is because it increases our comfort level about the fact of adoption. One of the ways of telling the child is showing the photographs, starting from the very first day till today, all the photographs in the form of a story. Their daughter Vishaka is 13 now, at the beginning of adolescence. When she was younger, she had a lot of questions about her birth giver. But right now, at this phase of her life, she feels adoption is no big deal. Uh, they started telling me when I was like really small, so I just got used to it. So you kind of grew up? Yeah. And did it make you feel different in any way from other children? No, it didn't make, me, uh, it didn't make a difference like to me. And you discussed the fact of being adopted with your friends, with your yeah. friends and all that. What's their reaction? How did they respond? Uh, they don't, I mean, they don't react in like a, I mean, they don't show any reaction. They're like, okay, it's fine. Okay. They're and fine with it. Do you ever have any curiosity about your origins, your birth family? Do you ever uh, wonder no. about that? No. Adopting one child usually takes a lot of thought. The Lobo family with three adopted daughters is definitely more the exception than the rule. We adopted our first daughter when our youngest son was four years old. And then we wanted a little more of the good stuff, so we adopted our second daughter. And then uh, in between we fostered many children with special needs, you know, and though we had said, you know, no more children at the end of five, somehow, like I said earlier, man proposes and God disposes and our little girl came to us five and a half years ago. There was a certain element of uh, uh, fear of the unknown, but uh, that disappeared very fast because things fell into place very quickly and very beautifully. Uh, I think the doubt that would be 
bond equally. That doubt disappeared so quickly. And sometimes I wonder whether we bonded a little faster and better <laughs> with the children who came in through a decision than rather through natural circumstances. My parents, did, when I was fairly young, I was quite young, my parents told me that I was adopted. So at the beginning I was upset, I was hurt, I felt like I was I was given away. But they explained it to me very well. And I always knew I could, if I had a doubt, I could always come back and ask them. And I always, at, yes, in the beginning I did want to know who my natural birth parents were. I did want to know who my mother was. But that was just the beginning stage. Now I definitely feel my mom's my mom, and there's there's no doubt about that. How old were you when your first sister came home? I was five years old, and I told my parents I wanted a pig. <laughs> and they got it wrong again, didn't they? <laughs> but actually, that that was the first day. The second day, they couldn't get me to come for dinner because I was supposedly, allegedly watching over her. You deny it hotly, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So that's how five years old. And then another sister, and another sister. And there might be a few more if we don't stop them. But yeah, and it was after Trisha. It, there was really no difference once they came home. I guess the only difference was I didn't have to rub my mother's feet while she was pregnant or something. We, we've been friends for quite some time. We've known each other for eight years. So it was, I mean, we've known that she was adopted, but it never crossed my mind. I don't know why. It, it was never an issue. And people say, oh yeah, Alicia and Trisha, you guys look alike. I was like, no, they don't. <laughs> I know they're sisters, but they don't look alike. What do you want to do when you grow big? You. Uh, she says she wants to do what her mommy does and find mommies and daddies for all the babies who don't have mommies and daddies. Is that right? Yeah. That sounds worthwhile. <laughs> the families we met embarked on their adoption adventures after careful thought and consideration. As one parent said, it is a decision made with the mind and the heart soon follows. Like all families, adoptive families have their share of ups and downs. They have their challenges to face and a chance to experience the warmth that a family can bring. Companionship through the journey of life. And there is more than one way to build such a family. Send us your feedback on this show. You can SMS us at 6388 or send an email to feedback at ndtv.com. Thank you for watching. Special report. This is Maya Sharma in Bangalore for NDTV.